This is something that we actively do. It's really foundational and pretty basic. People look at the vanity numbers of their Instagram profiles or of their TikTok profiles and think, if it's not bigger, why not? And they're spending a lot of money in paid ads to try to achieve the same goal that they could do in like a few hours a week. I have called it potty time because you just need your Instagram app on your phone and 20 minutes. At the end of the day, if you're not making money, you're wasting time. Hello and welcome to the Perpetual Traffic Podcast. This is the show where we share cutting edge strategies on acquiring leads and sales for your business through paid traffic. And I'm here in the flesh, which is rather unusual. I think we've only ever done one uh, belly to belly show, Ralph and I, uh, but Ralph has the vid. So he's been replaced by, I think, improved. We've improved the co-host situation with the one, the only, the irreplaceable Lauren Petrullo. Lauren, thanks for being here. Hello. And if you're watching the video, uh, you can see that Laura and I are actually in the same room, um, which is difficult because we have one microphone to play with. It's okay. We're going to get our neck movements yeah. on. We'll, we'll figure it out. Um, this is official banter time, Lauren. Mm. So as you can see in the script, we need to banter for, <laughs> for, for some moments before we dive into all the nitty gritty of the amazing things that you're going to teach everybody. Okay, I'm going to call people, call you out on stuff I can see at your desk that no one else can see because the camera's there. Oh but you God. have a check written to yourself. For $100 million. This is amazing. Yeah, I want $100 million net to me after taxes. Here's what's really kind of cool. This is probably oversharing, but this was my old affirmation card. Uh, and on my old affirmation card, you can see that I have a, a very specific number. And what's interesting is after my exit, I hit almost exactly that number network. Oh, wow. So I believe in that kind of stuff strongly. I don't know if that's weird or not, but um, Can I add more numbers to that one? No. That's okay. because that's the past. You don't want to mess my old. Okay. Yeah, you should write a check out to yourself for some money that you want. I was just more laughing at the fact that you still have a check. I have a lot of checks. Okay. Yeah, you don't write checks. You're a lot younger than I am. I'm old enough to be your dad. Sure. <laughs> Sure. Uh, Lauren's from Orlando, not from, but you live in Orlando. I do live in Orlando. Which is a horrible place we've already established. Oh my gosh. And not worth visiting. Yeah. Your taxes yeah. are so much better here in Arizona, I'm well, sure. If you were just to level it down to one degree of analysis, taxes would be like the one thing that Orlando wins. My, our old people are better than your old people. Our weather's better than your weather. The only thing you have are theme parks and they're... Fantastic. Yeah, but they're like... The largest, Soul sucking. largest single site employer in North America is in Orlando. And that's Disney? Yes. Mm. And you worked for Disney. I did work for Disney. Yeah. I was an innovation producer for Disney. Were you a mouseketeer? Um, no, but I did get my doctorate. I went to Disney University and I have my doctorate. That is my highest degree of education. MBA means nothing. It makes me so sad for you. What? I feel like there's so much trauma there that we don't know about. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lauren Petrullo, if you haven't heard her on Perpetual Traffic before, she's a rising star. I think she's the next big thing to hit digital marketing. She's truly brilliant. These are things I generally don't say in her presence or to her face. Um, but it's in the script. That's why he's you know, reading I'm, it. I've been forced. Uh, she's come to us today prepared with a nugget, a yes. quick hitter piece of immense value. And I don't know what this is. This is going to be a surprise to me. Yeah. You didn't tell me before. I didn't. But this isn't mine. I'm stealing it from Jimmy Kim. I steal all my nuggets. Okay, good. Yeah. I feel like two of them you stole from me. I, I'm just going to say sure more I of them. I'm pretty sure I credited you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It sounds, so, sounds true. So hashtag you're welcome for the free publicity. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, no, this one I, I'm stealing, borrowing, giving credit to Jimmy Kim. I don't know who that is. He's the CEO, uh, founder of Sendlane, is an email service provider. Oh, yeah, use. I know Sendlane. Um, he's really good on Twitter if you're looking into email marketing stuff. Um, we switched over a lot from Klaviyo because Klaviyo has gone more into biz dev. I mean, they just went with their IPO the other day. Mm. Um, and so this Which is- Which they put off for two years, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, How did it go? I didn't pay any attention. I bought some stocks. Did you? Yes. So, yeah, I think every marketer should really pay attention to stuff like that because depending on the direction that it heads, you may or may not have Clavios, <laughs> right? Like I, I've, we've seen that happen in the past. Yeah. Well, like it's, I mean, even like two weeks ago when Lasana's quarterly earnings reports came out, I yeah. think if you are in marketing and you're using tools, it's nice looking at where they're at to understand what's coming for either your business or your clients. I've been on platforms that have gone under, been acquired. Do you mm. remember Optify? No. Out of Seattle, Washington. I had 30 clients on Optify. And then one day Marketo came and bought him, sunset the whole damn thing, didn't tell anybody. Yeah. Ugh. Back to your nugget, Jimmy um, Kim. Yeah. 
uh, he, uh, his strong recommendation for welcome flow. So a lot of people do onboarding welcome series when someone becomes a subscriber. Um, and I've yet to go into an account that we've taken over or even that we've audited that is doing this. Um, when someone signs up and becomes a subscriber and they're on your mobile device, are you sending them first an email or an SMS? Email always. Right. But if they're on their mobile device, wouldn't it make more sense for that first communication to be in an SMS since they're coming from you from a mobile device and you already know that information? Way more. Yeah. So yeah. if you can set up your onboarding series to be device specific and introduce that first welcome to the club, welcome to this environment with a text, you're going to capture their attention way more effectively than if you're sending an email that they'll eventually check out later because they don't have notifications on for emails. That's brilliant. That's, That's a my great nugget. nugget. I like it. Do you, do you buy on Timu? Yes. Okay. I figured as much. Knowing you, I, just, I don't mean to stereotype you, but you seem like a like a hardcore teamer. Um, yes. Yeah. That's the name of what we are. Look, I I bought papers to do. So I like doing podcasts and I've been trying to do 100 podcasts this year. Did you know that? No. 100 different podcasts or 100 podcast episodes? 100 different podcasts. Oh, so we won't have you back. Well, I, okay. I want to help you with I'll, your goals. You're going to keep having more nuggets. So yeah. it's like I'm secretly back. But it's not going to help you reach 100. So why would you do it? Um, well, I'm coming back. He doesn't have a choice. If you're I'm going to show to this, up at this house. If you want a, a phenomenal guest for your podcast, reach out to Lauren Petrullo. How do they reach out to you, Lauren? Uh, mongoosemedia.us. Or you can email me personally. Nice. Lauren at mongoosemedia.us. There are no real American companies that have .us domain names. It's only just people in India and Pakistan trying to pretend like they're an American. I know because my family's Pakistani and they, they use this trick. Either that or they'll put USA in the domain. Oh, yeah. yeah my cousin owns customrugsusa.com. He's in Karachi, Pakistan. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, you are not fooling anybody. That's so yeah. funny. All right. So back to your paper. We were talking about Timu. Yeah. Oh, um, so I used to put marbles to see I have how many podcasts I've applied to, how many I've accepted, how many I've recorded. Yeah. So I can look at this like growing marble yeah. glass structure. Well, it started getting obnoxious. And with these claws, like I can't pick up the marbles very well. If you're listening, Lauren has nails that, that could be uh, Disney <laughs> villains. Like if you saw just her hands, <laughs> you'd assume that there was definitely some poison candy somewhere, somewhere <laughs> close. For sure. But um, I decided to buy those paper uh, origami stars. Yeah. So I bought those for like $1.50. They were $13 on Amazon. So I 100% went to Timu for it. So check marks just are off the table for you. You need yeah. more. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think Timu is the most convertible site and app I've ever seen in my entire life. If you want a master class in CRO and mm. follow up and ascension, like, dear God. I get two texts a day. They were the But first. they're amazing. And they're all, it's all shit you want. They know. They've like uh. figured you out. Right? Am I wrong? You haven't unsubscribed. I did. I unsubscribed from Zach. This wow. is the first time I've ever unsubscribed as a marketer to any text. I get texts from all these brands that I've purchased from or not purchased from because I want to see what they're doing. Oh, I'm, I'm creeping. still up to the drip. I am no. hooked all the way. I think it's un unbelievable. Here's the thing. I've never once in my entire life downloaded an app for anything from a force perspective. And Timu got me. They're like, oh, if you download the app, you get this, 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 and this. And then I download the app. And then suddenly I didn't enable push notifications. Okay. But then when you're in app and you're buying their ability to like, you know, one time offers and upsells and order bumps, I've never seen hmm. better e-commerce ever, period, full stop. There's so many games that happen that sometimes I think I'm watching a YouTube video of a gamer. Like it's like, oh, right. pop for this. Oh, pop for this. Like it can get a little excessive. You know who uh, my business partner in Driven, uh, which you've been to, Perry Belcher, has built a effectively like a, a Shopify alternative, let's say. Hmm. But instead of e -com, it's it's landing pages for um, physical products. And he's built in a bunch of the Timu features. Hmm. So it's going to be pretty cool. For um, what I had been following before Timu, if you have like large SKU stores, I have a large SKU e-commerce store. I really like looking at Fashion Nova and Shein because they have- Fashion Nova? Yeah. What was the second one? Shein, S-H-E-I-N, looking at their navigation menus, looking at how they- Organizing and catalog, categorize. Categorize? Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm. um, has been really, for me, has been one of the best examples I've seen across any other e-commerce platform. Interesting. I'll go check out Shein. I've never heard of them. What do they sell? Lots of pretty pink boots. Okay. Maybe I won't. No, no. That's, yeah. it's, it's a fashion apparel line. It's uh, you'll, you'll see that when you start seeing their unique products that everyone has their unique items. It's a really popularized 
fashion brand for women, but they do have men's stuff. Okay. I like pink boots. Yeah. yeah. Will you wear pink boots if I buy you pink boots? If they were good boots. Like, are they comfortable? Very. I'm a form. I'm a function over form type. Fantastic. Yeah. I, wear, I have 12 of this same shirt. I wear the same shirt every day. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't smell like it. It's not. Okay. <laughs> we need to cut to a quick commercial break. So Ralph Burns can purchase what? What is Ralph buying with the money from these commercials? Um, jaws or size. <laughs> Ralph is buying jaws or size. Which is to tone, tighten, strengthen your face and neck. And they're not uh, advertisers, so we shouldn't be pumping them out. Uh, when we come back, we will be talking about... We'll be talking about uh, Instagram growth techniques that are so easy and embarrassing that we have to have an episode because if you're not doing it, like it's you're shameful. You're stupid. All right. Coming back with Why You're Stupid right after the quick break. <laughs> And we're back with Lauren Petrullo. In today's conversation, we're going to talk about all of the massively impactful, but actually very simple mm -hmm. Instagram strategies that you should be partaking in right now in order to, what, grow your business, grow your followers, everything? Everything in between, take over the world? Take over the world. World domination. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the floor is yours, madam. Wow us. Wow us. Um, okay, so this is something that we actively do uh, in our business, and it's something that you can delegate to a VA. It's something that your social media manager or social media intern could do. Uh, it's really foundational and pretty basic. Um, a lot of people look at the vanity numbers of their Instagram profiles or of their TikTok profiles and think, if it's not bigger, why not? And they're spending a lot of money in paid ads to try to achieve the same goal that they could do in like a few hours a week. I have called it potty time because you just need your Instagram app on your phone and 20 minutes, which, you know, depending on what you ate. Yeah. Yeah. Could justify potty time. Right. Um, but where I think a lot of brands will spend too much time and overcomplicate a really simple process is they don't want to go to basics and they want to say like, oh, I'll spend the money on these ads and this will work. But really foundationally, if you know who your ideal customer profile is, if you know who your competitors are and where people are going that aren't you, and you offer similar content or value content ads to content they're interested in looking at, whether it's financial education, real estate investment, um, supplements, weight loss, whatever industry you fit into and you have value first content on your profile and you want to get that in front of new people, you can just start engaging with your competitor's Instagram profile. So let's say that you're buying this black shirt. I buy my shirt from Cuts. Cuts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's say I am true classic and I want to go after Cuts Instagram audience. I'm just going to literally ask my VA or my social media manager to spend 20 minutes, three times a day going through Cuts Instagram profile. And a lot of people I've seen do this with apps um, or they'll just follow anyone that cuts is following, do the follow, follow back, all that jazz. Mm. But not none of that's useful. What you want to do is look at who is engaging in their comments. So you look at cuts most recent post. And then everyone that's engaged with cuts most recent post is super active already on Instagram and showing behaviors you want demonstrated on your profile. Mm. So as True Classic, I'm going to go to cuts Instagram post and start loving on everyone that's engaged on cuts. How do you do that? Like, how do you do that without it being so obvious that you're just poaching competitor traffic. Who cares? Okay. Why? So you're full frontal. Like, yeah. Hey, true classic is better than cuts. Come no. Okay. Out. No. The first conversation is, so we, we'll use a highlight tool inside Google Chrome. So we'll track who we follow. So we'll follow the people that are engaging. Hold on. That's a nugget unto itself. Tell mm. us about the highlight tool. I didn't know this exists. Uh, yeah. So we, we organize all of our stuff with a Chrome extension. We highlight tool. So everyone that we're looking at, we'll highlight their name and then it gets automatically added to a Google sheet. So we'll know if we're going to follow, like unfollow them because we don't want to have like 20,000 followers. Mm. So you follow them to have the conversation and unfollow them when you're done. Yes. Well, we follow them you're to get... You're catfishing Instagram. Oh. is what you're doing. We follow them so that we get their attention because we're going to follow them and they're like, oh, who's this notification? Yeah. Who's this brand true classic? This is really interesting. Okay, I'm going to go creep. Oh, it's a brand. Okay, understood. But then you keep liking their stuff or like you start engaging in some of their posts briefly. Mm. Or even if at the laziest version, you follow them, they see what you have. You have content about like 
classic t-shirts or like t-shirts that fit really well. And that's what you want your feed to be full of. Yeah. Great. Why wouldn't I follow you if your most recent content is great? Easy peasy. I'm already following other e-commerce brands similar to you. There's so much about that that's already brilliant before you even engage with them. To just go to your competitors, look at who's engaging with their messaging and just follow them. Because I do. Anybody who follows me, not anybody, but very often I'll go check them out who they mm -hmm. are, what's going on. And, and then I've raised my hand and said, I'm interested in this. And so you're dragging them over to you. But then you engage. Yes. We'll engage in, uh, in Messenger or on the No, on their posts. We love on them the way we want them to love on us. But wait a minute. They're on a cuts. They've commented on a cuts post. Yep. You're gonna respond to their comment on that cuts. No, post. that's rude. Okay. I don't That's what I was confused uh, by. I was like, this is very bold, Lauren. Like No, yeah. we'll follow them and then so let's You say, comment on something they posted. Yes. Yeah. I Preferably love them. they posted something where you can actually see the shirt. Give value yeah. or something like, Oh my gosh, that t shirt looks great on you. Right. Or you know, like, it would look better. Uh, yeah. We don't know. We don't want to be salesy because okay. we just want to be nice, love on them and let them know that we also have great content they may be interested in. Hmm. So maybe they have a inspirational quote and just be like, oh, that cuts deep. That's a really good one. Hashtag cuts. Yeah. But you're too classic. So it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but to that capacity, like even at the lazy part, you just follow the people that are already engaging because they're accustomed to following e-commerce brands. You'll have this spectrum of individuals that yeah, don't want to engage your with brands. your people, your collie people, your watch video people, your brand yeah. people. But like people will follow and they'll use apps that will follow all of Cut's followers and 98% of them are garbage. The only people I want from Cut's are the people that are actively engaging on Cut's because I want actively engagers on our profiles. That's so smart. And I love the idea that you're tracking who you followed so you can unfollow them later. Yes. But we'll also then, so we don't engage right away. If they follow back mm. within three days, then we'll go give them some love. And then depending on if they end up starting a conversation with us or then it becomes a sales thing versus just a Instagram growth or TikTok growth strategy, mm. then we'll keep the follow. I need a CRM for this. How do you track all this? It's a Google Sheet and a Google Chrome extension called Highlights. Highlights. Yes. Okay. We'll leave links to highlights in the show notes. That's a great strategy. It's and that works for anybody e -com. Does it work for other things? A hundred percent. It work for SaaS. Yeah. Uh, we haven't done this for SaaS, but we've done it for a lot of high ticket, a lot of content education. If the SaaS company is providing value for solving a problem and a solution is their tool, but overall this, this project management and they're providing content for time management savings. Mm. Yes, absolutely. We'll work for them. It has the way that it works well is one, you have to have an optimized profile on Instagram out the gate. And what that means for us is like your profile says what you do and you're not an asshole. <laughs> Two, you have- Can we just talk for a minute about how you identify the asshole profiles? How do you know? Um, I I made $7 million oh, for my Oh, it's just the clients. yachts and the Ferraris. It's about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Gossam quickly runs to Instagram and edits his profile. <laughs> I'm going to move your water because I'm afraid it's going to knock over. I'm a spiller. That's Forgive fair. me for my humanity. <laughs> Um, you are forgiven. Thank you. So you, you want to have your profile set up with your bio makes sense. You've got a clear logo. Like it's not a picture of like of your face. If your face isn't your brand, mm. um, small little things like you have your highlight set up a really good highlight to have as an FAQs, have it in your first oh, four so and then make a story. Why not your first one? I feel like that's the best one. It's too obvious. Okay. Your, your first one should be like about me or like customer testimonials. This is why I'm so bad at social because I'm just so left brained. I'm like, all right, here's the information that you need to make a purchase. But you're right. Like it's a relationship building endeavor. What is the tool that we're using? Social media. Yeah. What's the first word in social media? You don't have to be condescending. Lauren. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm, I'm following along you on this journey. You moved my water like yeah. I'm five years old. Yeah, because you were like flailing your elbows around and my computer's right next to it. For those that are not watching YouTube, the way I'm married to an Italian, and so I speak with my full body and often look like the blow-up doll that's outside of all used car units and everything in like. Yes. We weren't supposed to validate it so <laughs> confidently. I'm watching. <laughs> Anyways, optimize your profile, put it in an FAQ, and you can even make it of like a video if you're shipping stuff, mm. do it of like you packaging. And FAQ is do you ship? Where do you ship? It's like we ship to USA. It, will be fulfilled within two days and delivered eight to 10 hmm. here. We ship to all countries in the U S like you just put all the copy over the US? Sorry. All countries outside of the U S. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad I got you. I did. <laughs> yeah. After you've made fun of me, I feel like you deserve that I for everybody ask... listening. Note that that happened. Should I ask Samantha for a Red Bull? <laughs> Lauren's turning beet red. I'm always beet red. All there's, right. there's no if, ands or buts about it. Like I've never considered, I mean, I know that I'm white and I've checked every box about it, yeah. but I always thought that I was pink mm. because I'm so, so white, so pale that I'm translucent and all you see is blood. 
like except the blue veins totally totally off yeah. track but optimize your profile do highlights use an faq that's really really helpful if you can explain stuff about so the first shipping. highlight is uh, about us or customer testimonials relationship building case yes. studies etc and then the last highlight before they swipe should be an FAQ. And that's generally the fourth highlight, yeah. right? Does that depend on screen size or it's always, you're always going to get four out of it? I mean, size does matter, but I believe you'll always get four. We can, what device do you, I don't have my phone in here. I have the big, big new iPhone. So I'm looking at my profile and I've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay. But if my but screen was smaller. But then five could be halfway showing, depending. You're right. You're right. So we do the fourth one. Yeah. See, my Your first, first one is habits. habits. I document all my habits. Okay. You can follow me at Kasim Aslam and, uh, I walk through my entire habit train, which okay. is massively obnoxious. So then here, what makes me think is your profile is yeah. about habit crunching. So then maybe you'd want to follow Tim Ferriss's individuals who's engaging with him. And you're like, hey, I provide content that's about how you can be better at habit building. Tim's not very good at habits. Okay. Then yeah. the Atomic Habits author. That's James Clear. Okay. Yeah. James stole most of what he wrote from BJ Fogg, who was his professor. So you now have all the people that you would follow and anyone that's engaging on BJ Fog, yeah. Fog's account could be valuable to you, assuming that your account is mostly about habit building. But I have nothing to monetize for habits, so I need to go figure that out. Okay. All right. Next tip. Um, when you're optimizing your profile, you can pin the first three posts. You should make those the first three that introduce your brand or what you want people to see. You're going to constantly be posting on your profile. But people don't take advantage of pinning the first three mm. so that when someone comes to your account, they're always going to look at your most recent post. Is your most recent post about Labor Day the best one to describe who you are and what you're about? Yeah. So pin the ones that either, if you don't know which ones to pin, pins one that um, are have high social proof on them. So people are a ton like, of comments, wow, ton of likes. tons of comments, yeah. tons of engagement. Um, or just choose what are the first three things you'd like to introduce people beyond a highlight. A highlight is just going to be like they can keep clicking, but what's a a reel or a video or a, a story that you can tell someone that really gets them into your brand. It's your elevator pitch, those first three pinned pins. Mm, pinned pins. Pinned pins. Yeah. Pinned P posts. Pinned posts. Pins are Pinterest, posts are Instagram. Pinned posts. And you're really good at Pinterest too. You're running the perpetual traffic Pinterest profile. Yeah. Hit 100,000 in under 90 days. From zero, right? Like we had nothing. Zero. You didn't have an account. You created it for us. We created it with you. So, so Tom, if you're listening, suck it. We were much better than you. Oh, before. I don't know who Tom is. Uh, he's on Ralph's team. Oh, Ralph's Tom. Sorry. Yes. I thought there was like a vendor that you're being very no, rude to. No. <laughs> All right. We're going there now. So if you go to the Perpetual Traffic Pinterest page, you can yeah. see Lauren Petrullo's work. And you know what's so funny is when you told me, oh, I'm going to run a Pinterest page for you guys. I was like, I'm so done. There's no, <laughs> there's no way this is going to be of any value. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But then you started screenshotting, like, look at all the engagement you guys are getting. Yeah. And I was blown away. I didn't think anybody but like, well, I won't go there. I didn't the, think anybody was going to be on Pinterest that would care about perpetual traffic. You assumed, like most people listening, that it's moms who are bored at 3 a.m. or exhausted. Yeah. And they're just looking on stuff for home decor, wedding. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. 40% of the Pinterest audience are men. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, for, I mean, that's not to say that my audience isn't female. There's a ton of female business owners. But I just didn't think that Pinterest lent itself to... You know, professional services, e-com, SaaS, mm -hmm. that, that type of... And you've got thousands and thousands and thousands of clicks that have been sent to uh, Perpetual Traffic's website, to Perpetual Traffic's YouTube. Mm -hmm. You've got well over 100,000 recurring monthly views happening. So, Tom, suck it. We have the highest engaged social media profile for Perpetual Traffic. Bam. Take that, Tom. In 90 days, no less. Oh, double trouble. And the best part, at least to that, and if you've listened to previous episodes, like I did one with Ralph where I talked how we got to 3,000 um, organic or organic clicks to the site in 30 days. Um, but now, you know, 60 days later, we're at over 100,000 recurring monthly views. So you can listen to like, we'll go more details into that. But I think the best part is, Cosm, how much time have you and Ralph put into your Pinterest I don't Pinterest even know profile? how to log into Pinterest. Yeah. Or I don't know how to find it. I imagine I just go Google perpetual traffic Pinterest, right? I don't know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That would work too. Um, and if Tom has put it onto the website, it might be on the social icons below. But how funny would it be if he hasn't out of spite? Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, that's his loss. It's okay. I yeah. get it. I'm just better than him. He... <laughs> this poor Life. Man. Yeah. Take that, Tom. Um, so but... it's, Tom's quit now. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's looking for a new COO. Uh, I don't know what Tom's role is. Do you know what Tom's role is? Um, 
being less than me. Wow, we're just we need to invite Tom on the show to defend himself. This poor man. I'll bring boxing gloves. Yeah. And yeah. my pink boots. You would have to. I wouldn't get in the ring with you. I'd be terrified. Especially okay. given that your husband's Italian. I just to stereotype assume that he can fight. Okay. Yeah. I I haven't tested at, that. At theory. least cook. Oh, he cooks so well. There I don't go. cook at all. Right. So barrier of entry is not hard to be good, but mm. we've been married 10 years. And when early on in our relationship, it was like, I'm not going to cook. So if you'd like to, you can. If you want to survive. Yes. Yeah. He is from Italy. So food is a religion to him. Mm. I am from the US of A. So it is fuel to me. Oh, we like food here. I think it's the English that just eat like boiled turnips and mm. I grew up on spam. Cabbage. So yeah. I had a lot of spam and a lot of crock pot. Mm. And it just all blended the same. So often I'm like, it's going in my stomach. I don't need you to separate yeah. what the food we is. We had a lot of hamburger helper and ramen. Those are. Yeah. yeah. Oh, tuna helper. That was my gem. Didn't have tuna helper. Okay. That sounds horrible. All right. Way to judge tuna helper. Yeah. I don't like tuna. Okay. Except in sushi. We're going to cut to a quick break. But before we go, Lauren's going to tease what she's going to teach us upon our return. About how you can turn all those new followers you've gotten from your potty time into actual engagers on your website and real potential buyers. Into monies. Money, money, money. Money's all that matters. Sure. It's, nothing's ever been more true. You haven't met my husband yet. Speaking of money mattering, listen to this commercial, you captive audience. We'll be back. Welcome back to Perpetual Traffic. I'm here with Lauren Petrullo, who is... I didn't know you were that sappy. No? No, I had no idea. Oh, I think I've cried like three times while being here. Yeah, but like, you know, I didn't... Oh, hold on. Just, <laughs> just back all the way up. People have no, <laughs> no context for that statement. Um, Lauren's just said some really adorable things about her husband. And you guys have been married how long? 10 years. Yeah, that's, that's, you're sticking it out with the adorableness. Usually that's like the first 18 months and then it's just, <laughs> and then it's just a cliff dive. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. You're committed. Yes. Yeah. And obviously committed, but I mean, committed also to. The sappiness. Being happy. Yeah. Yeah. Because what, what's the alternative? Not be happy? Being married. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> uh back to how do you make money so we got people following you did your highlights you did your mm -hmm. pin posts but who gives a shit because i can't tell you how much i have seen the vanity metrics not result in actual monetization well for sure i like out the gate full preface vanity metrics don't matter rachel miller says it really well like you want a hundred real customers not a hundred thousand followers mm, and i'm sure i love her by the way she is really, really she's smart. one of my favorite people in the world <sighs> We need to have her. Have we had her on? I'm sure we have. We need to have her back. Keep you going. Should. Yeah, well, she's got some really cool stuff that she's been doing, especially in the AI space. Yeah, busy. Have you played with that thing? No, I haven't. But I've seen other accounts and I've watched YouTube videos of it, and I'm really impressed. It's a miracle. Like I'm, I, yeah, it's cool. It can help you create lead magnets in a snap. Oh, and funnels, like oh, sure, yeah, the entire funnel and yeah. the ads and everything in between. Yeah. So this has been another commercial for Rachel Miller. Uh. Yeah. Be friends with us and we'll talk about you a lot. That's no. right. Um, but the the thing is like where people will focus on vanity metrics, it matters in small use cases when you're building affiliate deals or if you're trying to get press and publicity. Like, yes, those vanity metrics will come into play. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're not making money, you're wasting time. And so- Hold on for that nugget. That's a t-shirt right there. If you're not making money, you're wasting time. I love that. Oh, great. And like, like I said, money is all that matters. So like you just co-signed 100%. Okay. Well, I'll you wear that. You just said <laughs> any, anything you do that's not making money is wasting time. For social media. Yes. I'm going to give right. that caveat. Um, but where I think a lot of people will like lose traction is, so I have a really strong opinion on this, that people that are in your inbox, monitoring your comments, managing your messages are often just your customer service team. 
there are golden conversations. There's cash in those conversations that if you don't train your customer experience team on sales, you are missing out on a lot of money because you're going to have people asking specific questions that will be assumed as customer service, Mm. but are actually monetary based, transactional forward, use case. Someone who uh, reaches out to a hotel chain and is asking, do you have handicap parking or do you have van accessible parking? Because there's a family coming that have six people in the car and they don't want to park six blocks away when there's 25 other hotels they can visit in Orlando. So they're asking, can I park close to where I'm staying so I don't have to carry everything in the hot Orlando sun Mm. to my room? Is this convenient? A customer service conversationalist will say, yes. Versus a sales type of conversation can be like, absolutely, we have multiple drop off places. Are you asking this because you want to bring stuff to your room and bring this more of how your hotel is better than all the other chains around because they're going for rapid fire of who is going to give me my solution first? So, small little thing. If you have your. That's not small at all. That's brilliant because you're absolutely right. Every, you know, I have 200 clients and mm-hmm. 199 of them, when it comes to every one of those conversations, puts a left brain technician with an FAQ in front of them, Mm -hmm. in front of their customers, no sales training whatsoever, no sales narrative whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And there's so many things that you can do to ascend, upsell, or just satisfy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that's such a really phenomenal point. So ways that they can, if you want to like do this at scale and do an SOP is you can identify trigger words that lead to a transactional based question. Mm. So you can start and look through and you can use an AI and upload all these conversations. You can download conversations, put them into a CSV file, upload them into ChatGPT, have ChatGPT, analyze all the conversations you have and then bucket them into like 10 different categories. When all these chat apps now have sentiment analysis, right? So like if you're using any major customer service, Mm -hmm. help desk, whatever, they, they do a lot of this in app. Perfect. So it's even better. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm still uh, not AI dependent, but with AI as a tool with everything that we use AI yeah. as it's like, like you just flexed on me a little. Did I'm I? not AI dependent, but I <laughs> continue. There was a lawsuit that was just revealed the other day that someone who was getting um, protection rights for something they made in mid journey. And then they did a little bit of Photoshopping to age it was denied protection for it because it was an AI created source. Mm. So going back to the episode where I talked about what we've done with AI and blogs, mm. when I had said that we use AI as like Lego building, we know that we have tools and we build it in. It's it's an element of, so like our content will be 40 to 60% written by AI, but it's 40 to 60% written by a human. Um, that is something that has been changed and manipulated enough that it should pass what is now going to be case law for if you're using just AI at a basis and you're not using enough human interaction, you won't have protection on it. Mm-hmm. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just reviewing summaries that I have found. Yeah. So that's where I'm, I'm really mindful of the full dependency on AI. I think it's a tool to make you better, not a tool to uh, make you Rely lazy. On, yeah. Well said. But if you are using some sort of sentiment training and you upload conversations, maybe upload them over the last like 90 days or six months, you don't need to go super, super far back if you've had tons and tons of conversations, then you can bucket and identify elements that if you have trigger words that your customer service team finds in questions, then it might be, hey, I want to ask, how can I make this conversation be transactional? In fact, I honestly, I think every single conversation that is started in someone's inbox of a brand's inbox or on a post of a brand's uh, profile is a transactional sales-based opportunity because they know you're not a person. They're talking with a brand. Mm. And if you're a brand, that means you're not a corporate and people don't want to talk to corporates. Corporates are like this mystery thing, but you're a brand. I'm expecting you to engage with me and I'm telling you I'm open to being sold. Because I'm going out of my way to talk to you. So if you ignore them or if you're just like like or something that's really terminal and finite in the conversation, like, oh, we're so glad that you liked it. You're really disservicing yourself. So with all that, add training, sales training, if you can, to your customer experience team, if you really are SOP centric, like identify what are common conversations, what are trigger words for some easy sales wins. Um, But if you're using the following techniques that we've talked about, if you've optimized your profile so that new people that are discovering are like, oh, wow, this is really cool. I can get a lot out of this. Um, Ways that you can start driving traffic to your website, one that we found that works really, really well, um, which is actually changing a little bit because now there are broadcast channels on Instagram. So depending if you have like a guru based business or it's like all content forward, you might want to do 
um, Instagram channel broadcasts instead of going to the website, but just letting them know like, hey, like this is really great. We know there's a lot of stuff that you're seeing. We'd love to send you some additional information. We've got this newsletter here. Mm-hmm. And then you're able to get that first party data, get their information, capture their email, um, send them to a special page if you can, make like a you know perpetual traffic dot com slash IG friends, and then just make a quick landing page that tells them like, we're so excited you came here from Instagram. Here's an Instagram special. Let's get deeper into this conversation. And then you might change two or three of those first emails to be all about like their Instagram experience and things that like, hey, like, let's make sure you're sending us your profile. You can ask more questions. Um, But if you're using the conversation, letting them know, hey, there's value, we'll send this to your inbox. Or um, you can, depending on how sophisticated your team is, you can use trigger words and let them know that we'll send you like mini challenges or messenger bot updates, but also like the Instagram channels. If you have a following that's over 20,000 or a person specifically, that's going to get a better deliverability than emails. We're coming into Q4. It's the most competitive time in someone's inbox for SMS and email. So I would just consider the broadcast channel as an alternative. That's brilliant. Sorry, that was like a long monologue. No, it was a good one. Um, Going back to moving people from Instagram to the website, are there any like quick hitters or just best practices. You know, we started this conversation saying, here's all the stuff that you're stupid if you're not doing. Mm -hmm. So what are the real basic, like you're just stupid if you're not doing this? So um, still surprising. I don't think a lot of people know that you can have multiple links on your Instagram profile. I I saw this recently. I always thought it was just one, but then now I'm seeing two. Yeah. I think um, Adam, who's in charge of Instagram, announced it like three months ago, four months ago. It's been a while. So you can mm. have multiple. How many is multiple? Is um, there a limit? I feel like there's four or five. Wow. And it may change. Like it's rolling out in different capacities. So but not you still can't it. put links in descriptions, comments, like in the conversation. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, uh, uh, Hold on. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, but you should use like in your uh, in your stories and stuff like you, you can add the link there. So yeah. you can add as a sticker. But if you're an e-commerce brand, um, one little hat trick. All the shops have to be meta enabled now. You can't, um, unless you had it before, have your meta shop means that you're allowing Instagram and Facebook checkout. Of course, this varies depending on where your physical location is, but a lot of people will tag the photos with the product. Mm. Did you know that you can tag inside the comment with the product and that will get you directly to that PDP? What is a PDP? The product display page, but the meta shop PDP. So if you're writing about um, Mm. these glasses and you're putting, you're tagging the glasses in the picture, but someone's reading the comments and they're engaged with the comments. You can then tag this specific product and then in launches, the comments, and it launches into that the meta-driven PDP, which yes. is still in app. Yes. So the continuity is strong, it's fast, and they can buy it using Facebook checkout. Yep, and you'll be able to retarget those in your Facebook ads. But I think like just a small thing, like so. No, you can't do the links in the posts, but you can tag the products the way you can tag people in comments. You can do that in the post description. That's brilliant. And I still, I mean, that's been around for well over a year and I still don't see brands tagging the product themselves. They're talking about the product, but Mm. not tagging the actual product that takes them faster to the purchase. And it's such a small thing too, that could make a really significant difference. That's what's funny is you build up this massive following and then you don't capitalize on the following. Yeah. Small, small little thing. That's like, if you have an e-commerce store, tag the products, assuming you have uh, meta enabled um, Facebook and Instagram shops and that you are in a country that allows it, but you can tag them. Did you do an episode on Facebook shops? Yes. Okay. I thought so. We'll include a link to that in the show notes. Cause if you're in the e-com space and you're not using that, I have, man, I feel like that might be the single biggest opportunity right now to differentiate yourself. I would offer that the TikTok shops is bigger because oh, that's a I newer release. Say that. I'm sorry. Blah. I hate TikTok. Okay. Do your customers hate TikTok? I don't care. I don't if have you don't any 12 like year old customers. Oh, strange yeah i don't know i just i'm so old lauren i i opened it up and it it just made me mad instantly like instantly okay i'm like an old like get off my lawn the minute i open up tiktok i don't know what it is um i'm gonna mess up your algorithm give me your tiktok and i'm just gonna follow a bunch of that's stuff. the problem that's- is here's what bugged me is is a because it asks for information demographic and psychographic information as you're creating your tiktok profile mm-hmm. and then what it started to deliver to me was so insulting i'm like this is who you think i am like <laughs> I don't know. And Do you consider yourself different than what they portrayed? You yes. To be? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I thought just always that was more sophisticated. Uh, Lauren, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Mm. Uh, we'd love to have you back on a regular basis. I think that's already planned, right? It is. How often are you coming? Every other month. That's not often enough. Okay. Who's, well, who Tom, decided that cadence? I think you were the one that decided this cadence, Tom. 
who I've been insulting this entire episode. Yeah, I think it's going to be once a quarter and then once never again. Uh, Where can people find you if they want to work with you? Uh, Mongoosemedia.us or Lauren E. Petrullo on all socials. And you do what professionally? Like what would they be hiring you for specifically? Because you talk about a lot, but are you like a a fractional CMO? You drive traffic? What's What's the value prop? Uh, The value prop, we will help drive an avalanche of traffic to your website or to your brands is the main easy one. An avalanche. An avalanche of traffic. Do you want to look at how many thousands and thousands of traffic visitors we've gotten just for your Pinterest Pinterest in 90 days? Can't wait to see what you do with our TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. You won't be on it. No. (laughs) Um, Why Mongoose? Um, Oh, true story. My brother Brendan, um, when I was fired from the last agency I was working with, he said, you can come back. A mongoose is a really fierce animal, can take on two snakes, can take on a lion. You are a mongoose. And then I said, okay, mongoose media. Because he didn't like my idea. I was going to do Goldilocks marketing. I like Goldilocks. Because it's I'm blonde yeah. and the marketing that's just right for your business. He's like, no, that's dumb. Mm. Be like the mongoose. Be fierce. All right. I'm with your brother too, but they were both good. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a rating wherever you happen to be listening. I have to tell you all, the ratings are huge for the algorithm. And so if you don't mind giving us a digital thumbs up, five stars, you can also let us know whatever we can do better at perpetualtraffic.com forward slash better. You can follow Ralph on Twitter at Ralph HB and Kasim on all socials at Kasim Aslam. Go back and listen to previous episodes. All resources and show notes are at perpetualtraffic.com. Lauren Petrillo, last words to you, closing comments, statements, wishes. I would say how important our review is very important because I wrote a review once and ended up becoming a regular guest on the podcast. So I'm not saying that can happen, but it did. Yeah. You also have to be a brilliant marketer. Um, Just kidding. Uh, Appreciate everybody's listening. Love y'all. Mean it. Peace.